Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to gain access to custom methods that are on an Oracle ADF model layer. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here we have an employees view on our model layer and what I did was I enabled custom Java code by going to the Java tab and clicking on Java classes and made sure that I could override all of that. So once I did that I have my custom Java code here. So the employees view impl.java is our own custom code for our view object implementation and then we have our employees view row impl for an individual row. In our last video tutorial I stepped you through how to create this code on the model layer. So let's just review this code. Here we have our employees view impl and I created a method called delete emps. It takes as its argument a list of keys. These keys represent the primary keys of our employees table. So if our employee keys does not equal null, then we're going to loop through all of them. And here we have find by key, which is going to return the corresponding record in our table. And find by key is going to return the corresponding record. Hopefully this is a unique key so it only returns one row, but in case it doesn't that's why we have this array. Okay, So what we're doing is next we're making sure that our row is not equal null and the row.length is equal to 1. If those two conditions are true then we're going to take that first element, so the only record that comes back, and we cast it to our employees view row implementation and then we simply remove it. So remember in our last video tutorial I said that you should not perform a commit inside of this code. Okay, you're going to do that somewhere else. So now that we have our code here, remember that our delete emps takes as its argument a list of keys. Now in order to create on the view layer a table, we need to first of all enable multiple record selection. So when we go through the wizard we'll just hit a little checkbox that lets us do that. And then the other thing we're going to do is provide programmatic access to our ADF faces table so we can gain access to those keys and do something with them. I'm going to go here into our unbounded task flow that was created for us and I'm simply going to take this view and drag it on there. We'll just call this delete emps. I double click on it and let's go ahead and create a JSP XML. Now under our data controls you'll see that we have our employees view too. If I scroll down a little bit here is our delete emps. Now if you're not finding it in there what you're going to have to do is go to your view object. Okay, so let me show you exactly where to find that. Here's your employees view. Uh, you go to your view object and make sure that you go down to the client interface right here and make sure that you toggled it over here. Okay, now that you know where everything is in your data controls, let's go in here and drag over our employees view and create an Okay, so now you know where everything is under your data controls. Let's just drag over your employees view and create an updatable table. Make sure you allow for multiple row selection as well as sorting. Okay, now we want to have programmatic access to our table. Okay, that's what we call a, a backing bean. It's when we have a Java bean that's registered in our uh, task flow and we've provided programmatic access to our table. So the actual Java data type is going to be rich table. So how do we do that? Well, we just scroll down until we see our binding attribute. And I'm going to go in here and say edit. And I'm going to create a new bean. I'll just call it cell bean short for selection bean. We're going to make this request scope and generate the class if it doesn't exist. Now property. We can call our the property for our table anything we want to. I'm going to call it the table. Now that we've done that let's take a look at our existing code and here we have our 
rich table. Okay, here's a fully qualified name. We also want to provide a helper method. This is going to return a list. Okay, so let's do a public list and we can call this anything we want. I'm going to call this get table keys or we could call it get selected table keys. It's up to you. Alt enter to import the java.util and this is going to take no arguments. Now since this returns a list, uh, just as a placeholder to make this compile, I'll just say return null and now we can instantiate a new list. So our goal here is to figure out all the records in the table that the end user selected and we're going to return a collection, a list of those. Uh, we're going to be accessing the binding layer okay, and passing that in to the model method. Okay, So what we're going to do here is instantiate a new array list. So we'll just say uh, list key, we'll just call this list, equals new array list key, alt enter, let's make sure we import oracle.jvo and also import the array list, okay, looks great. So now we're going to loop through, we're going to, going to do a Java enhanced loop, so if we say object let's call this emp key. We're going to loop through the table dot get selected row keys. So what we're going to do is, is loop through all of the records that the end user selected. Now let's do this. The table dot set row key. Why do we need to go through this? Why do we need to loop through one by one? Because at any given moment there can only be one currently selected row key. So here we have, we're going to pass in our emp key just like that. And then we're going to call the table dot get row data. Now you'll see that get row data takes no arguments here. It returns an object. Now what we can do is take this object and downcast it to the appropriate data type which is JU control hired node binding. This is how we get access to the binding layer. Click on here to perform the cast and now we can say list.add passing in our data dot get row dot get key. The very last thing we want to do is return our list just like that. Okay so now that we've created that we're finished with the programmatic access. Okay so now what we need to do is go back to our page right here and before our table I'd like to insert a panel group layout so I can place my button there and now I'm going to drag from over here my delete emps placing it on my panel group layout so not only will this create a button but it will also provide the binding to my custom method check this out here in gray we have the delete emps that takes a key okay and for the value we're going to use our expression builder and hey here's our cell bean here's our table keys perfect that's all we need to do now just out of curiosity here let's go ahead and take a look at what our bindings now look like here we have a binding what type of binding is it it's actually a method binding okay you can tell by the icon if I were to go through here and you'll see the icon for method action Okay. If you want to take a look at the actual XML behind there, just click on this XML right here. And you'll see, let me make this a little bit larger. Here we have our ND name. So named data is emp keys. The value, we're referencing our table keys. And the type is java.util.list. And I'm actually going to just simplify that right there. 
Wonderful. We'll save this and now let's test it. I'm going to right click and run it. Okay, here's our table. I know it's only about 300 pixels wide. That's just the default width. We don't have to worry about that too much. But let's see if we can select a few employees. Let's just grab these two employees down here and then say delete emps. You'll see that they are now gone. Now did this actually persist to the database? No, we didn't provide a commit button. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, all you need to do is go back to here. Here's our panel group layout. Remember, the application module represents a user transaction, so that's why these operations of commit and rollback are on the app module level. So all I need to do is grab this commit, place it onto my panel group layout, create a button, and now we can take a look at this in design mode, and here we have it. We want to use partial page rendering. By default, our commit button is going to be disabled. So if we want it to be aware of any changes, we can uh, set the partial triggers of that to uh, point to our table. Okay, Or if we just want to make it uh, enabled no matter what, then we can just set disabled to false. Let's just change it to false. Beautiful. Let's run this again. Well, here's our table. Let's scroll down again, find those two records. And now we're going to delete EMPS. So it did delete it from our physical table and now hit commit to save our changes. Let's just double check on the database level. I'm logged in as HR and we're going to do a select star from employees where employee ID in 1901 and 1902. No rows selected so our changes did stick. Well I hope you found this video tutorial very useful. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.